Hi guys, welcome to this edition of the American Civil War in 28mm. This is our rendition of the Battle of Shiloh using Pickett's Charge Woods. It is 6 a.m. on the 6th of April, 1862, and Albert Sidney Johnston's tired Confederates who have marched through, through two days of rain are approaching Pitt's Landing and Ulysses S. Grant's Union Army. Grant is unaware of an attack coming and has not really laid out a huge defensive plan. However, in the morning light, Peabody sends out some troops and his scouts quickly encounter some Confederate scouts and alerts the Union Army who just about in time managed to organize themselves and stop the entire army routing. And what follows is America's most bloody day up to this point, 23,000 casualties and the Battle of Shiloh. Now the Battle of Shiloh, although an amazing battle, was quite difficult to war game because it was in three distinct phases. The first phase was the 6 a.m. attack which basically swept the Union back on the um, Union right, um, past Shiloh Church, etc. And then later in the afternoon, Sherman and McClellan retreat up towards um, the defensive positions that they make at six o'clock, as you can see on the map on the right hand side. Um, Prentice, Hurlbut uh, hold and fall back and hold the Hornet's Nest and the Peach Orchard, the Sunken Road. Um, and Breckenridge actually sweeps round the right uh, and threatens the uh, Hornet's Nest uh, from the right. Hardy, Polk and Bragg, once McClernand retreat back, they actually surround the Hornet's Nest and start hammering it. Now to war game that is quite difficult. We're lucky at our club because we've got uh, access to some big tables. So using the two 18 foot tables that we have and bridging across, we managed to form an N. Using this N shape, what we've done is we've bent the battlefield around to fit on the table, because obviously we, have, we haven't got access to a 36 foot table, although actually now we've discovered that we have by doing something else, which you'll, you'll see in future battles, we do get Esberg, etc. But for this battle, we actually formed an N. Breckendridge and then Bragg, um, they're facing off against Hurlbut uh, and Prentice. And then as we go around the corner and go up, you've got Polk, who's, who's crossing over towards um, Wallace, who will be in the uh, right-hand side of Prentice here. And then you've got Hardy on Polk's, uh, on the Confederate's left-hand side, who's pressing Sherman and McClernand towards Shiloh Church. The time frame we've chosen is around about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, Prentice and Hurlbut weren't quite far as far back as this at 10 o'clock in the morning, but it's give or take an hour or two either way. This allowed us to fit the Peach Orchard, the uh, Sunken Road, the Hornet's Nest, uh, this, the centre of the battle and Duncan Field and um, Shiloh Church, etc., all on one big battlefield. So we've taken a slight liberty with a bit of timing and we've actually bent the battlefield round into the shape of an N. Two. <laughs> <laughs> right, Frank. So, who are you playing today? I'm playing a Confederate. Okay, Hardy. Jimmy. Yes, Hardy. There's a picture of the man there. Yeah, and you're is. attacking against Sherman. Oh, that's I am, yes. Mission. And what's your plan, Frank? I'm going to try and smash through the centre. Yeah. And go all the way through to the, uh, the river. And what are your chances are? Uh, if I can get rid of that gun battery in the centre there, yeah. I think I've got a pretty good chance. All right, who are you? Well, I'll do it exactly as we did it before, before you forgot to plug the mic in, okay? Okay. So I'm, I'm this bloke. So you're Leonardo's Pope. Uh, sorry? You're Leonardo's Pope. 
That's, that's who I am, yeah. yeah. And evidently this one dies. No, he doesn't. That's broken. I broke. <laughs> it's good to see the knowledge since the last time we recorded. This yeah, but well, you didn't record it properly last time because you yeah. didn't. Indica- you told me that he was the one who no, died. No, he's broken. He takes over from Johnston when Johnston dies. Oh. But listen, history's a small matter of all game. You don't have to know everything. Well, so well, you're attacking Mick, who's Wallace. Yes. So what's your plans then, mate? What did I say before? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to beat him. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yes. Over here's Blue Light. Hello, mate. So you are, apart from making tea and coffee, who are you playing today? The McClelland. And the big man. And Sherman. And Grant. And Grant. So you've got all of it. I've got all of it. So what was your plan then? Um, to die badly. Brilliant. Do you think you'll succeed? No. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> uh, see, the thing is, I can only make videos with the material I've got. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pathetic in it. Yeah, again, all right. So you're Wallace. I am for my sins. So you've got a lot to defend against, to be honest. You've probably got... It's nothing we can't you. handle. Yeah, and you right. think you'll win? We have a robust... I've got no doubt about it. We've got a robust, Brilliant. robust defence and the strength of our cause. Excellent. So what's your plan? Well, to hold the front line, then yeah. by a telling manoeuvre to drive the Confederates back. See, Dana, I hope you're watching this. This is what you need for videos. You know, and, and Tim, don't yeah. ask what the Tim Can you put is a poll like. up to ask if he's got a very short arm and get people to vote on it? <laughs> What's that? Oh, I'll I'll that. Short arm. Oh, Andy, <laughs> Andy, uh, who are you today? I am General Braxton. Was I right? Was I right? <laughs> what did I say? And he's done exactly what I said. I, <laughs> I am General Braxton Braxton. I have nothing but myself for the conflict and the onslaught of those Yankee invaders there, sir. Indeed, no pride whatsoever. So I played Union Generals Prentice and Herbert uh, in the Peach Orchard and the Hornet's Nest. So having taken some small liberties with the battlefield uh, and the figures, um, we'll move on to the rules. So the rules we used were pickets charge rules, which are brigade, division, corps level type rules. Um, and they work really well for the American Civil War, in my opinion. Now I have been asked to do a review by uh, a few people on the rules, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, gonna grab a division aside or so, do a small game, and I will just review the rules, uh, you know, the die rolls needed, and you'll see a whole playthrough. On a, on a table so you can see what you think of the rules. My own personal view of them at the moment is they are very good uh, rules for this type of battle. Um, they, they really break up the flow of the battle. You know, if you want three or four brigades to go in at the same time, you roll your dice and depending on the brigadiers, you may get one or two going in, you may get all four. So it stops everybody being a Napoleon and being a General Lee. Um, you know, you can position your troops perfectly order the attack and only one of the brigades goes in and gets completely shattered. Um, the rallying in the game is fantastic, it's very much like the American Civil War, you know, stuff stuff didn't stuff stuff did run away completely and dissolve and break, but quite often the American Civil War regime was reformed um, after being uh, routed and went back into action. And in fact there's many instances during battles where ad hoc regiments were formed from from different groups of troops that have run away. So the, the, these rules give the game a very good feel for the American Civil War. This one, nine inches for the So that's cavalry. So I've got both of these. Yeah, towards yeah, that's that's road. That's fine, okay? yeah, 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 yeah. Poke is coming through the woods. So and once they move, you have to throw and Hardy to keep also forms. Is it four, five, or six? Four, five. As the battle begins. Breckenbridge rolls for his right hand brigades and they both roll up well. They stay in good order and advance towards Hurlebert. His two guns deploy and start to fire canister into the skirmishers that are deployed to stop him. The skirmishers start to fall back. Breckenbridge's other brigade rolls well and advances in good order through the peach orchard. He deploys his guns and instead of firing on the troops in the peach orchard, chooses to fire on Prentice in the sunken road to support Bragg's attack. Meanwhile Prentice and his guns unleash a fury into Bragg's lines. Bragg's brigades roll badly and some of them go hesitant. Bragg is delayed in attacking and his attack comes in piecemeal. 
W. H. Wallace realises he has a large gap in his lines and deploys cavalry to cover it while he quickly redeploys his lines, hoping that Polk and Hardy aren't quick enough to exploit this position. Although seeing the gap, Hardy decides to advance and hit the rail fence opposite the Duncan field. He uses both brigades which roll well. Polk unfortunately rolls badly and comes in piecemeal against Wallace's right. Hardy's other division rolls well and the brigades commence their advance towards Shiloh Church en masse. Yeah. He was charged by Jackson, I understand. Was he? Uh, was he? At, uh, Fredericksburg. Mark, Mark yeah, it was a whole action. Oh, right, and yeah, yeah he was. The, yeah. And um, Jackson never got actually to bring the uh, charges forward because they just dismissed it. Yep. So uh, that's why it ran for the horses. Uh, uh, right. uh, And that's Barry, all right? It's uncanny, isn't it? Get out of here. I'm sorry, it's the eyebrows, isn't it? I'll forget some. One more. Have I done? Yeah, we're right here? Yeah, it's good, mate. How's it going, Andy? I see a lot of dice in front of those things there. No, uh, you're just fucking, you're disillusioned. <laughs> you mate. might want to send them 20 sided dice. Well, if you get up off that chair, sir, and walk around here, you might see a different picture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> might not be the picture I'm portraying, but hey. Uh, it doesn't matter. Lose a brigade. Oh, that's that's the attitude. That's, that's, that's the attitude. No, that's the right. That's what Greg did. He lost the brigade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's say, and the brigade, put it back. Of course. You can't yeah. make omelettes. On the Confederate right, Breckenridge makes good movement through the uh, Peach Orchard, pushing the Union skirmishers back towards their own lines. His units don't stop and they keep coming on, hollering and whooping with their rebel yell and force the Union skirmishers to go right through their own lines to seek safety. The Union at the fences await the Confederate onslaught. The Confederates only pause to receive a volley from the Union before declaring charges and the rebel yell is heard right along the line. Meanwhile Prentice's cannons still play havoc amongst Bragg's men and start to break up Bragg's attacking brigades. So this is where Polk's brigade going in against Wallace. Boom. Polk has decided, one of Polk's brigadiers has decided to leave and go on French leave. And the entire brigade has now faltered. See, that was the telling manoeuvre I was talking about. That was a good move, that, Mick. Yeah, well done. There you go, there you well go. done, Mr. Wallace. And also, this brigade, Bragg's division, has faltered. Yeah, and the Union is still over. holding yeah, strong yeah, in this thanks, corner. Thanks you're, you're the same geezer who told me to fire that battery and got a casualty. As Polk and Hardy come in to exploit the gap in Wallace's lines, Wallace makes a serious decision. He sends forward the cavalry to drive off the skirmishers and buy some time for the Union. Meanwhile, Hardy's brigades reach the picket fence at Duncan Field and launch a furious attack against it. However, on his left flank, he decides not to assault the church, but instead uses batteries to soften up the Union positions. So that was now, was six, that's so seven. Yeah. And this one lost. For a moment, it looks like the Union line and the Peach Orchard may hold, but then both sides of the line start to waver and give way to the massive Confederate onslaught. Only a single solitary regiment in the middle manages to hold. The men just stream back and the Confederates are poised to completely break the Union army. So this is the disastrous move for me. One each. One each. Two very scared Well, they're both fresh. Yeah. Fuck. So, but we've not done a double one yet. So, I suppose we must fight it twice. Oh, yes. I doubt it because he's got, he's, he's faked two units. Yeah. So he can't fake one. On the immediate right of the Peach Orchard, Prentice's cannons and men in the sunken lane proved to be too much for Bragg, and Bragg's decimated units start to fall back across the fields in which they came. 
WH Wallace seems to be hanging on when all of a sudden one of Hardy's brigades managed to smash into the fence at the Duncan Field. Up and over they go, whooping and hollering with the rebel yell and force the Union back from the fence line. Union regiments start to fall back in disarray and the Confederates surge on. Luckily a brigade behind them support manages to stop the Confederate assault, but the Union line is in danger of collapsing. Here? So that's 10 casualties with that double panacea. That's cut. Just disintegrate. Apparently. Just six already. They had to take 12 back when they go. He's definitely done double panacea. Just blew them away. So that's that one. Done. Shattered. Yep. Okay, so you can remove those, mate. Yeah, okay. Instantly just disintegrated. That was. That's cool. So it makes you feel good, doesn't it? But you charged in well. I've lost a double canister bit. So I'm hoping now that you ain't going to fit this brick. Yeah. Which I think it's only one unit gone, isn't it? Yeah, one completely destroyed. Just when things were looking dire for the Union, Hurlbut and Prentice refused their flanks and poured a deadly canister and volley fire into the beleaguered Confederates who had just won the Peach Orchard. The Confederates could not withstand this with their shattered regiments who were unformed and began to retreat back through the Peach Orchard from the direction they came. The Union Brigade that rallied started to follow them back across the Peach Orchard and soon the retreat became a rout and Breckenbridge and Bragg started to run from the battlefield. W.H. Wallace managed to hold on and his forces started to push the Confederates back in the centre. Hardy could not capture the church and Sherman's forces began to counterattack. With Union reinforcements arriving, the Confederates had no choice but to abandon the battlefield and head back to Corinth, and the Battle of Shiloh was over. Uh -huh.